When I see family members who are a bit distant from one another, I completely understand. Because the more you give people access to your life, the more that they'll take advantage of you. Nine times out of ten, family members do the worst, unimaginable things to us. Because they believe that they're family and will likely get away with whatever that they do. Well, sometimes, you know, something similar happened to me, but before I get into it, let me give you a bit of context. The first time I met my husband, Jake, was at a bar, where I had gone for a girl's night out with my friends. I remember it very vividly. During that season of my life, I was going through a lot of difficulties, and I just had a terrible breakup. You know how this romance story goes, boy meets girl, and they fall in love, except I didn't fall in love with Jake immediately. Honestly, I wasn't really open to another relationship or having anything to do with this man. But Jake still tried to talk to me, even though all he got were red flags at my end. Let's say he just ended up being very humorous of a man, and his jokes made me feel better. Later that night, we exchanged numbers. A few days later, we went on a date, and some weeks down the line, Jake asked me out. Believe me, his love and affection for me swept me off my feet absolutely. Within the first few months I spent with Jake, I experienced the kind of love I never ever experienced before. Not even my toxic, abusive parents showered me with what, well, the love that I got from him. It was almost like Jake knew me in and out and could understand me even when I didn't understand myself. He was just great. Three months after Jake and I began to date, he took me to his parents' house and introduced me to them. Before I met Jake's parents, Jake had told me so much about them, especially his younger brother Tom, who he had spent most of his childhood with. So that evening, we went for dinner at his parents' house and everything went smoothly. His parents, especially his mother, was very receptive and she embraced me with love. I also met Jake's younger brother and his girlfriend, Maria, and we clicked almost instantly. So, as time passed, I got closer to Jake's family and got invited to occasions like birthdays, family hangouts, Thanksgivings, Christmas, and the rest. In fact, there was nothing Jake's parents or his younger brother celebrated that I was not a part of. We became a very strong family unit, and I got pretty close to Jake's younger brother. I guess the reason I was really invested in Jake's family was because I grew up with crappy parents and I didn't know family could be so full of love. Until I met Jake's family. Also, since I was my parents' only child, I never had any siblings, so I believed that I could just build that sibling bond with Tom. Even though he was my boyfriend's younger brother, I practically thought of him and treated him as family. Sometimes, Maria and I would hang out together while the boys would go out and do their thing. <laughs> it was just something we did once in a blue moon, and it really helped us bond. Since Maria and I were both in a serious relationship, we knew it would only be a matter of time before we became sister-in-law, and we prepared for that. Jake and I dated for two and a half years before he proposed to me. The day Jake proposed was one of the happiest days of my life. He had planned everything with Maria, and I was literally so surprised by all the decorations and stuff. Well, long story short, I said yes to him. And a few weeks after that, we began to plan the wedding. Since we were a bit tight on finances, we weren't looking for anything fancy or so expensive. We just wanted to host a small wedding where we could invite family and friends and just have fun. Unfortunately, after making our wedding preparations for months, a few weeks before our wedding date, I fell very ill. It wasn't the kind of illness that just lasted a few days, it was the worst I ever had. As a result of this illness, I spent weeks going in and out of the hospital for my medication, checkups, and other stuff. I had two major surgeries and was bedridden for almost three weeks. If it wasn't for Jake and Maria who stood by my side and supported me in that low session of my life, I don't know how I would have pulled through. Thankfully, I recovered some weeks after my last surgery, and once I was back on my feet, we began to plan the wedding again. The whole time I was sick, all I could think about was my wedding, and I didn't let Jake convince me with his quote, we're not in a hurry, you need more rest, speech. Since I badly wanted Jake and I to settle down, our second wedding plan did not go as long as the first one. We picked a closer date and began to make our preparations. While we were making preparations, Tom, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were all carried along. 
They knew the order of events, the color of the hall decorations, and literally everything that was going to happen that day. Eventually, D-Day came. And like every other bride-to-be, guys, I was happy. I mean, while other people thought or believed that our wedding was just an ordinary wedding, it wasn't to me. Marrying a man like Jake... Well, that's a dream come true, and walking down the aisle with him was my own way of ensuring that the illness did not take away my happiness. I was so happy that day, and everyone who attended the wedding could literally see me grinning from ear to ear. I mean, it was crazy. Since Jake and I were so bent on having a church wedding, we had a church wedding and moved to the reception from there. Upon getting to our reception... I believed that everything would go on as smooth as I had imagined, but I was so wrong. I was betrayed by someone I considered as family, and I will explain how it happened later. Well, after Jake and I cut the cake, Tom, my brother-in-law, came up to the stage and said he wants to make a special announcement. Since he was his brother's best man, Jake and I thought that he would want to pull some silly stunt or something, or maybe make a funny toast, but nothing, and I mean nothing, could have prepared me for what happened next. Immediately, Tom got the attention of all the guests, including Jake and I. He began to talk about how he had always wanted to do something for so long, and how he's been waiting for the right time to do this. The next thing he walked well, to was Maria, his girlfriend. She was sitting right there, and then he went down on a knee, and he proposed to her. If I say that I was not shocked and livid at the same time, then I'll be lying to you. You know that feeling where you think you're the prettiest girl in the room or the most well-dressed girl? For a minute, you feel like everyone's admiring you or gushing over your good looks. And just when you're enjoying all the attention, another girl who's prettier and perfectly dressed walks into the room and takes all the glow. That was exactly what just happened on my wedding day. By proposing to his girlfriend, Tom took the spotlight and stole all the attention from us. Family and friends who also knew Tom and Maria suddenly just went and focused on them and left Jake and I sitting there like idiots on the stage. The craziest part was that even till the reception ended, people would still go to them and congratulate them while no one seemed to even care about us. Thank goodness for my anger management classes. I didn't make a scene that day. I wasn't happy, but I didn't make a scene. The worst part was that Tom never discussed his plan with any of us. We were just as surprised as the rest of the wedding guest. So, the remainder of the day, I tried as much as I could to enjoy my day, but no matter how hard I tried, my mood had already been ruined. Two days after our wedding, Jake called for a family meeting, but Tom's girlfriend was simply not invited. At the meeting, I poured out my heart and told Tom I wasn't pleased with what he had done and that it was selfish of him to just ruin my wedding day. When I told Tom that I wasn't pleased, I was expecting that he would at least apologize, especially because he didn't ask for permission and left us surprised. It never happened. Tom claimed that he did nothing wrong, so he had no reason to apologize, and he said that all he did was ask his girlfriend, the love of his life, to marry him, but we were making some big deal out of it. Guess what, guys? My mother-in-law and father-in-law knew about the whole plan. In fact, they were even the ones who suggested for Tom to propose to his girlfriend on my wedding day. According to them, they thought it would be more romantic for one brother to get married and the other to propose on the same day. When I found out they were actually part of the plan, it got me even more mad. But that wasn't all. The fact that they thought I was overreacting and making a mountain out of a molehill was what made me the most mad. To even think that my mother-in-law did not take me seriously while I was telling them how disappointed Jake and I were. Upon seeing that, I would not stop yelling at Tom for not being remorseful for what he did. My mother-in-law began to yell at me and call me degrading names. She even said that if she knew I would turn out to be so, quote, hateful, she would not have allowed Jake and I to even get married because I look like the kind of girl that would destroy the relationship between her sons. That was what I got for telling Tom that his action was not acceptable on my wedding. Even Jake was so mad when his mother said that, but that was my cue to stay quiet and shut all of them out of my life. That wasn't all. 
My father-in-law said that I was being a baby for complaining about Tom stealing the spotlight from Jake and I. It was unbelievable. It's been more than four months now, and I have not visited Jake's parents or even spoken to them since that day. I haven't spoken to Tom at all, and the most hurtful part is that he seems like he doesn't care. I really hate it when people know they hurt someone, and when the person says, hey, you hurt me, they act like they did nothing wrong. The only issue now is that Jake's been complaining about my distance from his family and I'm beginning to feel like I took things too far. As much as a part of me still wants to take revenge on Tom for what he did, another part of me is tired of holding grudges. I know Tom was selfish and insensitive to propose to his girlfriend on my big day, but you all don't understand how angry I felt. I've been looking forward to that day, and I expected that the world would revolve around my husband and I, obviously, until Tom decided to play main character. So I'm asking, am I the a-hole for overreacting and yelling at my mother-in-law and father-in-law for making such a selfish suggestion? Did I go too far by shutting them out? Please let me know. I look forward to your comments and suggestions, guys. I want to say thank you so, so much. Update number one. Hey guys, I want to thank you for the comments. My apologies for taking a month to make this update. While some of your comments are not entirely what I expected, I've nothing to say about that. You're all entitled to your opinions and you have every right to feel how you feel. So many of you commented that I should listen to my husband and try to work things out with his family. Even though that's not exactly what I wanted, I had to try to bury the hatchet. A week ago, my husband and I went to his parents' house for dinner. Tom and Maria were there too, and I'll admit it. It was a bit awkward for everyone since we had not spoken to one another in months. Since months had passed, I expected that my mother-in-law would have forgotten about everything that had happened, but I was wrong. The minute I entered her house, her facial expression showed that she did not want me there. Then, at the dining table while we were all eating, my mother-in-law thought it was cool to ask me if I was still crying about Tom proposing at my wedding. Actually, she asked that question just to mock me, and it worked, because everyone at the table except Jake and I bust out laughing. I just retorted and asked if she was crying about it, and the minute I did, her face went red and she began to yell at me. Long story short, Jake and I ended up leaving his parents' house earlier than we expected, because his mother kicked us out. Well, I should say she kicked me out. <laughs> yeah, she did. She couldn't stand the humiliation I threw back at her. So she asked me to leave, and since Jake couldn't just let me leave, he followed me and we left together. Honestly, guys, if I say that I didn't feel good making my mother-in-law mad, then I would be lying to you. I enjoyed every minute watching her yell and put on a show. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is because for some weird reason... When Jake and I got home that evening, I received a text message from Tom, and the content was quite surprising. Tom said that I was being such a drama queen for walking out on everyone, and he didn't understand why I was still so upset about him proposing to Maria on the wedding day. But guys, that's not all. He also went on to say that he didn't want me and my mother-in-law to keep fighting. So he apologized, and in his words... If saying sorry will make you feel better and bury this stupid hatchet, then I'm sorry. Well, guys, when I saw that text, I literally went to explode and strangle him from the phone, but I had to keep my calm. I showed it to my husband and he told me to text back and say that I have forgiven him. In case y'all have been wondering if I did, I actually texted him back and said I was no longer mad at him and I had forgiven him. But deep down, I was still very mad and furious. The next day around noon, Maria called. It was the first time she had called after Tom proposed to her and she asked if we could hang out and I agreed. Even though I didn't want to go, I knew I had no reason to be mad at Maria because she has nothing to do with the proposal plan. She was just as shocked as I was, and Tom decides to pull this little stunt. While Maria and I hung out, she tells me that she and Jake had started making subtle plans for their wedding, but it was nothing serious. As soon as she said that, something crossed my mind. What if I hire a very hot girl to sabotage Tom's wedding for a few minutes? 
You know, uh, that moment the priest asks if there's anyone who doesn't support their wedding. Maybe the hot girl can raise her hand and give Tom a bit of a high blood pressure spike. I'm certain something like this will make me feel better. You might all think that I'm crazy and you're probably right, but maybe doing something crazy is the only way to put my mind at ease. Anyways, I will make another update. Hopefully, it'll be soon. Update number two. Hey guys, honestly, I think some of you are just a bunch of pretenders, if I'm being completely honest. It's been less than two weeks since I made my last update, and the updates have comments more than the actual post. So what if I want to play a little with my brother-in-law? I never said the girl was going to ruin his marriage, it was just supposed to be a oh, wrong wedding moment. Just something to make him panic a bit. Anyways, I will not be going forward with this plan since you're all screaming how much of an unforgiving a-hole I am. But that doesn't mean I don't have another plan. Actually, I do, and it's much, much better. So, a couple days ago, I discovered that I was pregnant. When I told Jake about it, he was so happy and so was I. That same day, Tom and his fiance were supposed to meet at our house for a small family get-together. We were hosting, and I planned to share the news with everyone, but just before I had the opportunity to do that, my mother-in-law hushed me. I had no idea that Tom and Maria were going to announce their wedding date that day, and it was some sort of cause for celebration. My mother-in-law claimed that that night was about Tom and his wife-to-be, so I could keep whatever I wanted to share with the family for another time. When she said that, at first I wanted to be mad because, you know, that night was supposed to be my big night, but my anger turned to a plan. In case you're wondering what the plan is, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'll tell you. I plan on doing a gender reveal on Tom and Maria's wedding day, and I'm going to make it epic. Honestly, this revenge plan has moved from just being about Tom to my mother-in-law. I can't wait to see her face on that day. With the way things are going, it's quite obvious that she doesn't like me anymore, or maybe she never did. And I'm dang sure our relationship can never go back to the way that it used to be. I know some of you are going to try to convince me to change my mind, or even call me all these demeaning names that you can think of, but I won't stop. Because my mind has already been made up. If it were just my mother-in-law telling me to stay shut the whole night, I wouldn't be so mad. But she literally made me feel like I wasn't part of the family and did not have a right to speak in my own dang home. You all have no idea how annoying it is to go grocery shopping, cook a meal for people, and at the end of the day, they make you feel like you're the smallest person in the room. After everybody left, well, Jake, he simply told me not to take things too personal. And that his mother was like that sometimes, but it really hurt. Imagine being hushed at your own party. Well, I'm not mad anymore, I promise I'm not. It's time for sweet revenge, so their wedding is in two months' time, and that's plenty of time for me to make my own preparation. It's time to give Tom and his mother a taste of their own medicine. I promise to not be too dramatic. I would love to especially thank everyone who's been very supportive. Thank you so much for your warm, encouraging words. I might not make another update, but I most definitely will tell you guys everything after the wedding, so thank you to everyone. Update number three. Hey guys, this is it. I know it's been quite a while and I miss you. I promised that I would update you right after the wedding, but it's been two months and two weeks and I apologize for the extra two weeks of silence. So the long-awaited tea is here. I'm not hoarding it anymore. Um, remember my last update? I mentioned that my mother-in-law made Tom the star of my own house party, and some days after that, we had a falling out. She made a post on Facebook about family bonds and how people who think they're family are not really family. And somehow, I decoded that she was referring to me, and I dropped a comment that was supposed to be a subtle shade. Let's just say she understood what I meant and did not take things very lightly. She ended up dropping at her house and yelling at me for embarrassing her online. After that issue, we didn't speak to each other for a very long time until a few days before Tom and Maria's wedding. Speaking of Tom and Maria's wedding, it was epic and everything went just like I had envisioned. So a couple of days before their wedding, I got confetti, balloons, and smoke cannons. And a couple of color-friendly baby stuff that would aid in my gender reveal, and I wanted everything to be epic. On their wedding day, right? Just as I planned, I acted all cool and excited. 
and I did not even let Jake know I was up to something. During the reception, I maintained my cool and was the supportive sister-in-law Tom needed me to be. Then shortly after the couple had their first dance, I told Jake that I wanted to make a toast and he agreed. Initially, a few days before their wedding, I told Maria that I would love to make a toast and she loved the idea. So when she saw me walk to the stage, she thought that I have gone there to say the nice things. After I got everyone's attention, including that of my mother-in-law, I told them I had a very important announcement to make. Then I excitedly told them I was pregnant. Before I went to the stage, I had already told some of my friends who were there to also bring the balloons and make a little bit of drama after I made the announcement, and oh boy, they did. Even Jake was absolutely shocked when he saw the pink balloons, confetti, and the whole canon drama. He didn't know how to react. Just when I was feeling myself and feeling like a star, Tom came and grabbed me by the arm and asked me what the hell I'm doing. You all should have seen the look on his face. I told him I was just using his wedding as an opportunity to announce that he was expecting a niece, and he yelled at me. Who gave me the right? I could literally see the veins popping out of this man's forehead and neck as he yelled. Honestly, I wanted to say a small speech I've been practicing for days, but at that moment all I could do was laugh. I guess it was my reckless laughing that really annoyed my mother-in-law, as she basically rushed to me yelling that I was self-centered and had ruined her, uh, well, son's wedding. Could you imagine that my mother-in-law asked me to leave? Yeah, she did, but Jake wasn't having it. I told my mother-in-law that it was just a harmless announcement, and she slapped me and called me the B-word. Yeah, she literally slapped me in front of all the guests and family friends who attended the wedding. That's when Jake absolutely lost it. He confronted his mother and asked her to apologize. She refused and still insisted that I leave. So Jake told her that if we left the reception, then she would never see us again. But she blatantly said that she didn't care, and that's how we left. One more thing. I forgot to mention how almost everyone turned their attention to me after I announced that I was pregnant. The feeling was magical, and for the moment I was the most important person in the room, and Tom felt exactly what I felt. It's been two weeks since the wedding, and trust me when I say that I've had the best two weeks of my life. The peace of mind and satisfaction I feel is top-notch, and each time I remember how mad my mother-in-law was, that memory makes my day. Well, speaking of my mother-in-law, I'm absolutely done with her. Jake is still mad at her, and they haven't spoken since, but I know she won't be seeing me in her home ever again, and will not be part of my baby's life. As for Tom, I know that we won't be working things out, and I don't care. Now he knows better to not do certain things without permission. Guys, I can now proudly say that revenge has been served.